This video will demonstrate how to properly install the Raychem self-regulating heat tracing system. Be aware some components and parts shown might be different from country to country, and the written installation instructions must be carefully reviewed before installing. Ensure that all required personal protective equipment is used. Installation instructions are provided with all products as well as on the Pentair website at www.pentairthermal.com. An electrical heat tracing system is much more than just the heating cable. A complete system includes the transformer, power distribution panels, control and monitoring hardware and software, power connections, heating cable, end terminations, pipe insulation, and related accessories. First, identify the system's major components, such as the heating cables, the connection kits, which includes splice or T-end seals and power connections, and the control devices, which may include thermostats or advanced digital controllers. Before you begin installing the heat tracing system, there are some initial steps we recommend you take. Review the design drawing so you are familiar with the layout. Compare the list of materials received to ensure that all components are on site. Make sure all mechanical pipe testing, such as hydrostatic testing, purging, is completed. Inspect the piping for any burrs, rough surfaces, or sharp edges, and remove them if necessary. Verify that any surface coatings are dry to touch. Inspect the cable reel for any nicks and cuts. And ensure that you have the correct heating cable. It's recommended that you write down the meter mark on the cable to ensure you know how much cable is left on the reel. Now, while the cable is still on the reel, Perform an IR test by following the procedures detailed in the Installation and Maintenance Manual. Record the test results and compare them with the criteria mentioned in the Installation and Maintenance Manual. The insulation resistance test should be done several times during the installation process. Before installing the cable, before installing components, before installing thermal insulation, after installing thermal insulation, prior to initial startup or commissioning, when doing a regular system inspection, and after any maintenance or repair work. First, mount the reel on a stand near the start of the circuit, as this will make it easier to pull the cable along the path of the pipe. Pull the cable the entire length of the pipe to the point where it will be terminated. This is done to make sure you have enough cable for the entire circuit. As you pull the cable out, loosely string it over any supports. While the cable is on the ground, make sure it does not get walked on or run over, as that may cause mechanical damage. When you reach the end of the circuit, leave approximately 3 feet or 1 meter of extra cable at the end of the run to allow for a service loop and or termination on any component. Secure the cable to the pipe with glass tape. The extra cable of the service loop ensures you have enough new cable available if a connection kit ever needs to be replaced. For installation, start at the end and work back towards the reel, securing the cable to the pipe every 12 inches, 300 millimeters, with glass tape. When installing cable on a straight line, mount it on the bottom half of the pipe. This protects it from mechanical damage and places the cable closest to the product in the pipe. As you work your way back to the reel, you'll need to pull back additional cable to wrap around heat sinks such as supports, valves, and flanges. The extra amount of heating cable needed is determined in the design. For flanges, leave the required loop and wrap around the flange as shown. For valves, wrap the cable around the valve body so the heat will be concentrated in the area of fluid within the valve. If the heating cable is difficult to install on the heat sink, wrap the cable on each side of it. For support shoes, leave extra cable to compensate for the heat loss that occurs through the shoe. When installing heating cable on elbows, the heating cable should be wrapped on the outside radius of the elbow and 
in instances where a dummy leg is present, refer to the design documents for a specific adder amount. Note that other installation methods may be used, such as spiraling or using multiple runs. Check your installation and maintenance manual for detailed instructions. Insulation resistance testing is a reliable indicator of the electrical integrity of the system and should be conducted using a 2500 volt DC tester. Take the cable from the pipe and strip at least 2 inches 50 millimeters, to expose the conductors. Attach one lead to the braid and one lead to the bus wire. Make sure the exposed bus wire and braid never touch each other or the pipe. First measure the resistance between the heating cable bus wires and the braid. This test ensures the inner jacket has not been damaged during the installation. Next, measure the resistance between the braid and the metal pipe. This test ensures the outer jacket has not been damaged. A clean, dry, properly installed circuit should measure thousands of megohms, regardless of the heating cable length or measuring voltage. It's recommended that the test is conducted for one minute until it's fully charged. The Raycam JBS100 is a power connection kit for a single heat tracing cable. First, allow about 24 inches, 600 millimeters of heating cable for installation. Cut the heating cable end at about 45 degrees. Apply lubricant for easier insertion into the stand. Push 18 inches, 450 millimeters of heating cable through the stand. Now, square off the cable end with a 90 degree cut but do not attach to the pipe yet and proceed to stripping the end of the cable. When stripping Raycam self-regulating heating cables, you should be aware that conventional cable stripping techniques are not appropriate. Let's look at a correct way to strip a self-regulating heating cable. Before stripping the cable, refer to the kit installation instructions for the exact length of each cut. When stripping the Raycam self-regulating cables, use the Raycam SR stripping tool or utility knife. To remove the outer jacket, lightly score the jacket around and down, being careful not to cut too deep into the braid. Bend the heating cable to break the jacket at the score and peel it off. Then take an awl tool or a pointed screwdriver, make a small window in the braid and bend the cable. Work around the cable and open enough of the braid to pull the cable out. Bend the braid back out of the way and lightly score the inner jacket around and down to peel off the inner jacket. For XTV-CT cable, remove the exposed black fibers of the heating element, cutting them flush with the inner jacket. Then remove the spacer between the bus wires and trim even with the jacket. For cables BTV, CT, and QTVR, CT, remove the inner jacket and cut down to the black core. Cut a notch in the end. Use needle nose pliers to peel back one of the bus wires and remove all black core to expose both wires. Now with the cable inserted into the JBS100, mark 5 eighths of an inch, 16 millimeters, on the inner jacket. Retwist and straighten wires. Insert them into the core sealer guide tubes and push core sealer onto the heating cable to the mark made previously. Now remove the guide tubes. Slip green-yellow tube onto the braid, trim bus wires and braid leaving half an inch, 13 millimeters protruding out. Pull the heating cable back into the stand so that one inch, 25 millimeters, is exposed. When fastening the stand to the pipe, use the appropriate number of straps indicated in the installation instructions. Be careful to run the pipe strap under the heating cable to prevent cable damage. A small pipe adapter can be used for 1 inch 25 millimeter pipes or smaller. This prevents the cable from being crushed by the stand. Next, be sure to tighten the box completely onto the stand so that the grommets seal properly and install the cable tie so the box will not rotate. Conduct an insulation resistance test of the cable 
to ensure it was not damaged during the installation, and record the results. Next, to connect the bus wires and braids to the terminal blocks firmly, insert a flat blade screwdriver into the square hole to open the spring. The screwdriver will lock into place, allowing you to move your hand and insert the wire into the round hole. Then remove the screwdriver to clamp the wire. Use the same procedures to install the power wires into the terminal blocks. If you have a connection kit with a signal light, simply plug in the light module into the terminal blocks before installing the lid. Finally, stow the wire into the enclosure and fasten the lid in place. Finish by taping the service loop to the pipe to complete your installation of JBS 100. Depending on the wiring methods for your region, please use the appropriate conduit or power cable. The JBS 100 can be installed in different directions. If the JBS 100 is installed downwards, knock out the drain hole in the pipe stand. The Raycam JBM 100 is a power connection kit to power up to three heat tracing cables. Allow 24 inches, 600 millimeters of heating cable for installation. Cut the heating cable end at about 45 degrees. Apply lubricant for easier insertion into the stand. Push 18 inches, 450 millimeters of heating cable through stand. Square off the cable end with a 90 degree cut, but do not attach to the pipe yet. Now. Proceed to stripping the end of the cable as per instructed in the previous section. Mark about 5 eighths of an inch, 16 millimeters, on the inner jacket. Retwist and straighten wires. Insert into the core sealer guide tubes. Push core sealer onto the heating cable to the mark made previously and remove the guide tubes. And slip green yellow tube onto the braid. Trim bus wires and braid, leaving about 1 half inch, 13 millimeters. Pull the heating cable back into the stand so that about 1 inch, 25 millimeters, is exposed. When fastening the stand to the pipe, use the appropriate number of straps indicated in the installation instructions. A small pipe adapter can be used for 1 inch, 25 millimeter pipes or smaller. This prevents the cable from being crushed by the stand. Remove lock nut. Install grommet plugs in the unused openings of the JBM 100. Install junction box and reinstall the lock nut. Be sure to tighten the lock nut completely onto the stand so that the grommets seal properly. Finally, screw on the strain relief and conduct insulation resistance test to ensure the cable was not damaged during the installation and record the results. Next, to connect the bus wires and braids to the terminal blocks firmly, insert a flat blade screwdriver into the square hole to open the spring. The screwdriver will lock into place, allowing you to move your hand and insert the wire into the round hole. Remove screwdriver to clamp the wire and use the same procedures to install the power wires into the terminal blocks. A JBM 100 connection kit can be used in multiple configurations such as powered splice, powered T, powering two circuits, and just as a splice or T connection kit. Refer to the wiring diagrams in the installation instructions in order to make correct connections for your configuration. If you have a connection kit with a signal light, simply plug the light module into the terminal blocks before installing the lid. Finally, stow the wire into the enclosure, fasten the lid in place, and tape the service loop to the pipe to complete your installation of JBM 100. Depending on the wiring methods for your region, please use the appropriate conduit or power cable. The JBM 100 can be installed in different directions. If the JBM 100 is installed downwards, knock out the drain hole in the pipe stand. There are two types of kits used for a T or splice, above insulation or below insulation kits. We will demonstrate the above installation kit.
The Raycam T100 is an above insulation splice or T connection kit. Allow 24 inches, 600 millimeters of heating cable for installation. Cut off the heating cable end at about 45 degrees. Apply lubricant for easier insertion into the stand. Insert 18 inches, 450 millimeters of heating cable through stand. Square off the cable end with a 90 degree cut, but do not attach the stand to the pipe yet. And proceed to stripping the end of the cable as previously shown. Repeat these steps for the additional cables going into the T100. Mark 5 eighths of an inch, 16 millimeters on the inner jacket of the wires. Retwist and straighten wires. Insert them into the core sealer guide tubes and push core sealers onto the heating cable to the mark made previously. Now remove the guide tubes. Slip green-yellow tubes onto the braids, if needed trim bus wires and braid, leaving one half inch, 13 millimeters, protruding out, and pull the heating cable back into the stand so that one inch, 25 millimeters, is exposed. When fastening the stand to the pipe, use the appropriate number of straps indicated in the installation instructions. A small pipe adapter can be used for one inch pipes or smaller. This prevents the cable from being crushed by the stand. Be careful not to run the pipe strap over the heating cable to avoid cable damage. Now remove lock nut, install junction box, and reinstall the lock nut. Be sure to tighten the boxes completely onto the stand so that the grommets seal properly. Join the bus wires according to your instruction manual and conduct an insulation resistance test to ensure the cables were not damaged during the installation and record the results. Next, install crimps on the bus wires and the braid wires using crimp tool T100CT or Panduit CT1570 and install insulating tube over the bus wire crimps. Then screw on the strain relief and finally stow the wire into the enclosure and fasten the lid in place to complete your installation of the T100. The T100 can be installed in different directions. If the T100 is installed downwards, knock out the drain hole in the pipe stand. There are two types of kits used for end seals, above insulation or below insulation kits. We will demonstrate the above insulation end seal. The Raychem E100L is an end seal used to terminate a cable at the end of a circuit. Allow 24 inches, 600 millimeters of heating cable for installation. Cut the cable end at a 45 degree angle Apply lubricant for easier insertion into the stand. Insert the heating cable through the stand, leaving 12 inches, 300 millimeters of cable exposed. Measure 2.5 inches, 57 millimeters from the end, and lightly score the outer jacket. Bend the cable to brake jacket at the score and peel it off. Now trim the braid. Measure 1 and 3 eighths inches, 35 millimeters and lightly score the inner jacket to peel it off. Cut and remove all fiber strands. Score and remove center spacer and remove any remaining fiber material from the bus wires. Now mark 5 eighths of an inch, 16 millimeters on inner jacket. Insert bus wires into guide tubes. Push core sealer onto the heating cable to the mark made earlier and remove guide tubes. Next, pull the cable back into the stand until braid is just visible above the strain relief. Fasten the stand to the pipe with pipe straps, then place blue crimps on the bus wires and crimp the power wires to the bus wires and install the end cap over the cable end. Now insert a cable tie through the slot on the stand and the slot on the light, then tighten. And finally tape a service loop to the pipe. There are green and red color lighted end seals available. Depending on your heat tracing design, you have options to use thermostats or advanced electronic control and monitoring systems. 
consult the installation manuals, or contact us for directions on how to install and commission heat tracing control systems. Once installation is complete, the thermal insulation should be immediately installed. Check that all valve stems, conduits, connection kit stand entries, and any other devices protruding through the insulation have been weatherproofed. This will protect the insulation from moisture, which could damage it. Once again, confirm that the cable has not been damaged by testing the insulation resistance. Once the integrity of the system has been confirmed, apply electric traced labels on the outside of the insulation at 10 feet or 3 meter intervals and on alternating sides of the pipe where easily visible. Also be sure to locate the positions of all connections such as T's, splices and end seals. When all the components are installed, the system is ready for a commissioning test. To perform this, Conduct an insulation resistance test at the junction box. Check voltage at circuit breaker panel, energize circuits and measure voltage, amperage draw, ambient temperature and pipe temperature for each circuit. Finally, record readings in the installation and maintenance manual and leave a copy with the end user. Please remember, follow the commissioning test procedures in the installation manual. Be sure to use ground fault equipment protection on each heating cable branch circuit. This is important because it can minimize the danger of fire from sustained electrical arcing if the heating cable is damaged or improperly installed. And it complies with Pentair requirements, agency certifications, and national electrical codes. This completes the installation of your Raychem self-regulating heat tracing system. The system should now operate at peak performance. If you have any questions, contact your local Pentair representative or visit us at www.pentairthermal.com.